my mom confronted my father and he said, it's true. Everything they're telling you is true. And I was so elated because I, I, I knew that my mom was going to leave him and I was going to get to have a relationship with my mom and my, and that happily ever after was finally within my reach, finally. And my mom left him. And the next day she called me and said, I just want you to know I talked to your dad and he said, he's sorry. And I'm going home. This is going to hurt. It's time, it's time for, the for the suffering podcast. 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 My mother's going to cry, and that's going to be my fault. My parents will get a divorce, and that's my fault. My father will lose his job, and that's my fault. We'll be homeless, and that's going to be my fault. I'll be put in foster care, and that'll be my fault. So everything in the world that's going to happen to me and my family because of my father's actions are going to be my fault. So that's how a perpetrator works. When people don't understand, well, why didn't you just fill tell, in the blank? Why didn't you just tell somebody? Why didn't you just do this? Why didn't, yeah. Well, it, it's grooming, right? Oh, absolutely. And I grew up in the 70s. We don't talk about sexual assault now. We yeah. sure weren't talking about it in the 70s. We still, I still cannot get into colleges to talk about it. And sexual assault on a college campus is rampant, but we can't talk about it because it makes people uncomfortable. So we're not talking about it now. We dang sure weren't talking about it then. But it was um, not once, and once is horrific. It was not monthly. It was not weekly. It was almost daily. Now, my father, I told you, drilled oil in Alaska. So in the summertime, my father didn't work. My mom did, but my father didn't. Last day of school every year was my worst day of my life because I knew I was going to be home all summer with my father. So can I can I ask you a question? Ask it's, me anything. I'm trying. There's some questions that I have popping up. It's was it a violent assault? Was it a duty like I, I, I'm trying to get into that seven year old's mind where I'm, I'm scared. If I don't just sit here and comply, am I going to get hit? Um, was it you? Well, dad wants this again. It was your father, correct? Correct. All right. Dad wants this again. And I'm the vessel. I just have to. This is my job. Like you said, I, th I think duty is is the correct word. Like, did you feel it was your duty well, my father was a very violent man in every way, physically, mentally, verbally, emotionally, every gamut. My father was a horrific man. Now, I want you to know that the community, when you ask the community about my dad, my dad's a great guy, as most perpetrators are, mm -hmm. a really great guy. Now, society likes things packaged up because we can take them better. And so they like to believe that a perpetrator you know, rolls up beside you in a white van and says, hey, little girl, do you want some candy? But that's that's not the truth. We that's know that's them. Hollywood. Yes. And 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 the public can it's palatable that way. We can take that and digest it. But 80 I think it's 85 percent of all victims know their perpetrator. So it's not it's not the way society likes to believe that it is. But I think the main answer to that is I had a sister two years younger than me and it was my job that I gave myself to protect my sister. And I knew I had to do that. Now, the other side to that is I was terrified of my father. I had been beaten many, many times by him. He was a horrible man. So I knew what would happen. And the thought of saying no wasn't even on the table. Was, wasn't. was Never would it. Never. Because you just got beat. <laughs> oh, yeah. So you just had to lay there and take it. Yeah. There was no, there was no interaction. There was no... And he was so blatant. There were times when my mom's my mom worked. I could hear her car in the driveway. She'd be leaving for work. And my father would be in my room. And my mom's car was still in the driveway. And I always thought if my mom would just forget her cigarettes or forget her coffee or forget her whatever and come back, then she would see what was happening. She would gather my siblings and I up and we would move far away to this magical place where there's know where people aren't harmed and 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 terrific things aren't happening and there's ha happily ever after um but that never happened and and so you wanted to move to like disney world anywhere i wanted to move anywhere <laughs> you know when i lived in alaska there was this huge in anchorage there's this huge hotel and it's where they had the ritzy christmas parties and that was in my brain that was where i would that was where i could go um so you were able to totally detach yourself mm -hmm. yes did you have any conscious thoughts while the act was happening? Mm -mm. No, total dis detachment. 
Wow. As a survival mechanism. I guess you have. I guess you have to do that mm-hmm. to make sense. But it's even at seven years old. I'm pr- I'm fairly certain that you knew what was going on wasn't correct. To- oh, it was horrible. And to this day, I'm a compulsive hand washer. So, and it's been, you know, I'm 62, and I'm still compulsively washing my hands to get them clean. So I don't do it nearly as much as I used to. But that's is that like subconsciously washing the dirt off of you? Mm-hmm. Still trying to get yeah. that off of me. Um, there were times he would make me put a certain lotion on my hands. And so I'm still, you know, if I'm if I'm still for a second, I can still feel that and smell that smell and look in my brain. I can I don't know that they even sell it anymore. I can still see the label and stuff. Well, it's amazing that the 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 olfactory senses yeah. how how much they they trigger you know how I work that word in. How they Stop. how they tri- <laughs> trigger memories, like um, like with me, me and you to smell of gunpowder, the smell of burning tires. From yeah. my childhood, Murphy's oil soap. Do you know Mur- they, yeah. they use it for cleaning stuff? Mm-hmm. My mother used to clean with that, and I did not like where I grew up. And I remember telling my wife very early on, I'm like, if you ever buy Murphy's oil soap, I will throw it out of the house violently as far as I can. And it's just, it makes me snap like that. So lotion must do something Mm -hmm. similar, especially a scent. And I'm trying very hard now to remember the name of it, and I can't, which is funny because it's one of those things I've tried to forget, and it's finally gone. But Um, now now that you forgot it, you want to remember it. I can't remember what it is. But when I work with law enforcement, that's what I try desperately to get them to understand is, I know you want us to give you the who, what, where, when, and why and start at the beginning and take it to the end, but we can't do that. But ask me what I smelled. I'll tell you. Ask me what I heard. Ask me what I felt. I could feel grass. Oh, so you were outside. Or I could feel dirty carpet or whatever. We know. We know the senses. Ask me those things and I can help you as a victim. I mean, I'm not a victim now. Um, Well, you... I, I, I'm trying to paint a picture. Your father walks into your room. What is, does he say anything? Oh, no. He doesn't say anything. No, there's no conversation. And do you recall, Lots of groping. Do you, do you recall the, the, the first time that he did it? What he said is like, this is what's going to happen now. One of the things in my, in being told who I was all the time and dumb and stupid, um, one of the things that he often said to me during the times that he was in my room was that I needed to be really good at giving a blow job because that's how I could make a living. That was the bar that was set for me. At seven years old, your father is making you do that to him. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> what is what is fucking wrong with this world? Yeah, no kidding. I'm just sitting there. Where are we going to go with this now? Because <laughs> I... <clears throat> I have children. Mike has children. And I, there, it's the only two people in the world. Well, there's only, there's three people in the world that I would murder for my children, my wife. I'd murder you for them. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so they never have to feel anything even like this. And I'm trying to get into your, I, I really don't want to do that because what your father's thought process on why he would do that to his daughter. To his own daughter. For That's... God's sakes, it's your blood. It's 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 somebody who comes from you and you're treating it like a like a toy. It's got it's it's gotta be some sort of demented individual. That... It has to be. And I have people say to me, um, well, your father must have gone through something. Don't know, don't care. We have learned this through Clark Fredericks, who is a child uh, a victim of childhood rape. We we have learned this that because that's for, that's a question I asked him his his abuser a guy named Dennis Pegg I said well what are the chances that he was molested as a child and he what he had learned through his travels and through his therapy that that is a that is a very skewed fact that's put out it's put out as fact not all people who molest were molested I certainly haven't harmed my children. I yeah, can tell you that. Yeah, and exactly. I would go to jail if I thought anybody <clears throat> did. Oh, hundred percent. That's uh so I don't know if you're following the the whole thing of uh the Cain Velasquez story out in LA. Have you fought Cain Velasquez a UFC fighter, probably pound for pound, one of the greatest heavyweights that ever lived in the UFC. 
So his child was going to daycare, and he found out the daycare teacher molested him. I don't I don't know whether they penetrated, but I think it was there was some molesting going on. And when Cain Velasco has found out, he drove down there, he got in his car, he chased the guy out, the guy got in his car and started running, and he's driving down the road and he's shooting a gun at him. Right? Every father in the world went. There you go. Good job. Great job. Love it. Cain Velasquez gets gets arrested. So does this guy. The guy makes bail before Cain Velasquez. There's something fundamentally wrong. Hey, you know, the other question I have people ask me is, how do I feel about jail time and rehabilitation for perpetrators? No. I used to think if you could take a butter knife and castrate them, maybe they would stop. But it's not about sex. It's not. It's about power. It's, it's about, about power, power and control. Yep, absolutely. And so it doesn't matter. You can't rehabilitate the need for power and control. You just can't. I'm, I'm just trying to figure out what he saw, how how that happened. And I just, I, I you know what? There's some people who are just broken. They, they, they got that bent gene yep. in them that they need that. Or, you know, maybe they don't feel okay with themselves. And by doing this makes them feel okay with themselves. It's got to be an insecure person to, to try to boost their own ego. You know what I'm saying? To hey, look what I'm doing. And it, it 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 all goes back to power and control. Yeah. But so as a seven year old child, you're getting this on a daily basis. Mm, not daily, but uh, frequent. Mm, yes, frequent. more than once. Frequent a week. enough. More than once a week. Mm -hmm. And you're living your life like this, trying to go to school. Trying to a, go to school. Putting a face. So at that time, so this this obviously went on for years, mm -hmm. correct? So what? How did Looking back, how did your trauma present itself to the outside world? Very, I was very quiet, very shy, very withdrawn. Um, I got poor grades in school. No one asked why. My learning is awful. My, the way that I learn is awful because my brain is so broken. Um, but because I was so, I always thought in my tiny broken brain that if I could be quiet enough or tiny enough or still enough or thin enough or whatever the enough was that he would forget I was there and maybe it would stop. So I just became, which is, we talked about posture and I just tried to be just this invisible person and hoping that people would forget I was there. So I spent my life trying to be forgotten. But see, and, and you bounced around too. So you had nobody to really confide in. Right. You know, you had no friends or no teachers. No long-term best were, friend. You were mm -hmm. bouncing around from right. here to there. Which made it even more detrimental yeah. because I, there was nobody I could have gone to. Well, I, I mean, even if you stayed in like one school, maybe one of the teachers would have picked up on that. Perhaps because the town in Kansas that I lived in was a very small town of about 3,000 people. So maybe, but I, I, but I was never anywhere long enough for anybody yeah. to really get to know me. And so I just did my best to become invisible and truly invisible. I didn't ever raise my hand in class to answer a question. I couldn't read out loud. I couldn't do anything that brought any attention, attention to, to me. Yeah. Mm -mm, no. What do you think that was? What do you think the purpose of that was? Oh, I just wanted to be invisible and forgotten. I didn't want to be seen. I didn't want, and and certainly no one heard me. I didn't have a voice. And, I didn't. And your mother, your mother didn't notice anything. Was she comfortably ignorant? I don't know. You know, like uh, what I was going to say is like sitting around the, the dinner table when when everybody's there. You know, you, your father, your mother, your what sister and brother. Mm -hmm. it had to be an awkward. I mean, he he never showed signs of like. Oh, he was violent all the time. Violent outburst. If, but if again, he, that's how he controlled everyone. Right. Yeah. And if you at our dinner table, if somebody spilled a glass of water, it, you know, he would jump up from the table and flip the table upside down, and glasses and dishes and food would scatter. And um, that he guy's not here because Andrew spilled that water before over here. <laughs> and I didn't see Andrew <laughs> spill that, but I still, I'm just now, just in the last couple of years, if I'm anywhere and and I spill my glass of water I, i'm just like everybody take cover because all hell's about to break loose and i'm working on really really hard on 
getting grounded, getting my feet on the ground, touching somebody to it's okay. You know, I'm not 12. I'm not 10. The world's not about to end. It's just a glass of water. It's all good. So you had two younger siblings. Mm -hmm. Okay. Both girls, brother and a sister, brother and a sister was, was, did you, was your father's view of your brother a little different than the girls? Mm -hmm. Was, was that his, like, yes, his, his, his favorite. I don't he, he wasn't violent with your brother. Um, yes, some, not, not as drastic, not, not as much. And how about your little sister at this time? Was she ever, she was a little more, um, Mm, braver, I think she was braver than me. She would, she had a mouth on her, and and I didn't. I just. Well, now you you said your sister was two years younger than you, right? So you're kind of mm -hmm. in the same age group. Did you ever confide in her or anything like that? Or Not until I was thir thirty five. She and, was the first person that I told. And what was her reaction? Uh, shock. She. So she had obviously never experienced what you were experiencing. I. I I don't know. You don't know. Um, I have my suspicions. Mm -hmm. But together we told my mom. And when I was 35, nobody knew. Nobody. Not my children's father that I was married to. Nobody. And my mom confronted my father and he said, it's true. Everything they're telling you is true. And I was so elated because I, I, I knew that my mom was going to leave him. And I was going to get to have a relationship with my mom and my, and that happily ever after was finally within my reach, finally. And my mom left him. And the next day she called me and said, I just want you to know, I talked to your dad and he said, he's sorry. And I'm going home. And she did. And they stayed together until he died about 10 years ago. Holy cow. And Happy day in your life when he died, huh? Well, <laughs> the fact that she chose to stay was such a devastating blow. I'm sure. It's a kick in the pants after yeah. what you went through. Now, how how long, you're, you're talking seven till when? Well, I got married when I was in high school, a senior in high school. So I was 17. Was that, that just to get, a, did you get married just to get away? Mm -hmm. So it had been going on the whole time. Mm -hmm. <sighs> so I didn't play sports. I didn't have friends over. I I couldn't have friends over. I didn't know if it was safe for them. My job in the whole world was to protect everyone around me. Unfortunately, the person that needed the protection the most. Yeah. Was the one that was doing the protecting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Isn't that often the way? Yeah. The so I wouldn't have friends over because I, I didn't know if he would touch them. Um, the people trying to give those around them a little bit of peace when they're in pieces. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what it sort of comes down to. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you grow up, you, you, you start to become a very young woman. Did it ever once, did you try to tell anybody? Maybe you got to the door and you just couldn't walk through. Mm -hmm. Total no. silence. No, it was so far boxed up in, in the back of my brain that, mm -mm, no, I didn't. I just had this, I could be whoever I needed to be. If you want me to be the PTA mom, I can be that. If you want me to be the little league mom that brings the treats, I can do that. Whatever you just tell me, what you want me to do, who you want me to be, and I'll I'm I can be it. No, no. And forgive me if I'm if I'm stepping over, but when when you got married, and you had like sexual relations with your husband mm -hmm. was very very difficult. I was going to say it's going to be tough. Well, so the first so going back. The first time that you ever had sex, and please, if I'm going too far, tell me, cut the shit. Um, Your shit's I'm, all right right okay. now. Okay. <laughs> the first time you have a mutual sexual relationship with somebody had consensual. to blow consent, yeah, consensual yeah. sexual relationship had to blow your mind. I was so numb to everything in life that it was it was numb. Was it? At what age did you finally have a consensual sexual experience? 17 when I got married. 17 when, so real, you know, because I had heard through research that ch peop, uh, children who experience sexual abuse very young often become promiscuous. That was, you went the opposite. Right. I think, I think you go one of two ways. I think you either become very promiscuous and try to take some sort of control back of your life, um, or you just 
shut down. Just, yeah. I mean, you talk to most prostitutes on the street and they'll say they were sexually abused as children. So, mm-hmm. you know, that's where I get that from. And it's it's out of ignorance. It's not out of disrespect. No, it's not ignorance at all. And a lot of it goes back to, to the grooming. We know who we are. We're dumb, stupid, worthless, and we better be able to give a damn good blowjob. We know who we are. We've been told it our whole lives. <sighs> so I, I, I get those ladies. I, I can, I get it. I mean, I've never done it, but that doesn't mean I'm better than them. I, I understand it. It's an act that's emotionless. You detach from it. You get your money and you go. And never once telling your father, what are you doing? Never. That, I, that I, is, that is very strange to the way my mind works. I, I, listen, I, at some point, children rebel in whatever form or fashion that they rebel. I would, I, I would, I, I can't say I, I would do it, but you know, at some point it's enough where you, you, you fight back a little bit, I guess. I took enough beatings for other things that that one, it was, it was easier and it passed quicker to just be still. So you just wanted it over. Yes. You knew it was going to happen. You just wanted it over and mm-hmm. get on with the day. Mm-hmm. And I don't, I'm sure you guys in your jobs have heard people talk about, you just kind of go to the corner and you kind of just watch what's happening, but you're not really there. That, that was a lot of it. I was up in the corner and I could kind of see what was happening, but I couldn't feel it. I couldn't, I couldn't, I wasn't actively participating. I was just there. Just laying there. Just, just there. Yeah. You get married to your first, your, your husband mm-hmm. at 17. Did you ever open up to him? Never. Never, never said a word. For, you said the first time he opened up was 35. Mm-hmm. I, I, I'm sorry, I'm being redundant. No, no. Um, now I was still married to him at 35. You were. So, yes. And my mental illness spun out of control when I spoke those words about my dad. And well, what what was so before that? There had to be a reason why you say I got to unburden myself. Were you going to therapy? Were you going? No, actually, I went to lunch with a friend, and my friend said to me, completely out of the blue, "Sherry, I know about your dad." Now, to this day, I don't know how I I need to circle back and find that missing piece. And so we talked about it. I cried, she cried, and then we made a we made a, a pinky swear to never talk about it again. And that was my, when I left that restaurant that day, that was my plan to never talk about it again, except when I tried to put the pieces back in the box and put the lid on, the lid wouldn't go. You opened up Pandora's box. And I started spinning out of control and I knew I was going to have to get in therapy quick or I wasn't going to make it. So I had to tell my children's father because I I had to, he had to know where I was. Um, And I got started in therapy and it got a lot worse before it began to get better. And he didn't understand my mental illness and my marriage dissolved. Did he understand the, 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 the incest part? Uh, he knew. But he didn't really grasp it? Yeah. I, I, I don't think so. So the only way that this friend could have known about your father is if she experienced it or somebody else experienced it. So apparently your father has done this oh, multiple my. My guess is, if I just had to pick a number, a wild ass guess, I'd say no less than twenty five people. That's I, that my father perpetrated. That's just a guess. Yeah, you know what? It's it's like a it, they they go out of this playbook. They find this playbook, and it seems like every time I hear something like this, it is the same movie that plays. Yeah, no kidding. And nobody knows 